Okay, welcome back to another episode of Carl's Scale Model Showcase. And again, I'd like to say thank you to all the viewers and subscribers who keep hanging in there. I know there's a, a long time between videos sometimes here just due to work or other responsibilities. I, I wish I could build uh, a lot more than I have been lately, but uh, anyways, <clears throat> thanks again as always and and uh, stay tuned for more stuff to come. Uh, today we have the Freightliner Classic Conventional from Italy, 124 scale. Uh, this is a kit that I've built quite a few times in the past. Um, the first one I think I built was the really old uh, um, red painted uh, cabin hood with the dump truck body. Um, quite the quite the classic model now. Uh, this is the latest offering from Italy. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, I think I picked it up probably back in 2018 or so. It's uh, the white white tractor with the with the small sleeper and the um, and, and the blue and silver uh, decals in in the Freightliner paint scheme. There uh, it looks pretty good um, on the box art, but uh, yeah, this one here. What I did was I used the the double sleeper from the Freightliner kit uh, that you probably can't see. You no, know, it's in the background under those two auto car dump trucks, but it's the the FLD 120 kit, and um, I'm using that truck as a day cab for a future build, the FLD 120, but. Uh, something that's something that's different for me is it's mostly box stock there's no frame uh lengthening or shortening um we actually i, ha I actually built a sleeper truck uh it's one of the first ones i built in a while uh with the exception of the cab overs there the, the freightliner wrecker and then the the uh pretty favorite one out there is the the blue and white k100 uh flat top um but you know i'm more of a day cab my last video there was the western star day cab conversion in the cat yellow color um and this one here yeah all, all i did really was use that double bunk it worked on the uh the stock frame just fine uh, I don't think it was out of proportion or anything like that. I'm just going to move the truck instead of the camera here. Um, as far as the frame length goes, like I said, it, it looks in proportion to me. Um, the front axle also lined up really well with the hood this time. Not like back on the Western Star, if you remember, I had to, uh, I think I had to move the axle back actually from away from the bumper. But, um, yeah, and as far as the wheels go, you'll notice, uh, if you're familiar with the Italeri kits, um, the, the wheels, they always have a very, it's European, of course, so, um, the, the hubs are like, they're almost like a planetary drive. They're so, so large, uh, and they stick out a mile. Uh, they don't look like a typical North American hub. So what I did was I grind these down with my uh, my rotary tool, uh, the hubs themselves. And then those are actual, uh, just move in a bit closer there. I'm going to put a picture in. Those are actually thumb thumbtacks. Um, with a nice kind of you know polished finish to them and I just cut the the tack part off and then uh and then I used the uh, CA glue to to glue them onto the uh, the shortened hubs there and they look more like a North American wheel now these are also the really old uh these these wheels didn't actually come with this this updated freightliner kit 
they're the old style that have a little ridge um, reamed into uh, the rim on both sides and the, and the tire goes over that and locks into that little ridge almost like an actual bead but in reverse and um, anyways they just they look a little bit better than the newer wheels at least all the holes uh, that are drilled in there the 10 holes <clears throat> they're um, they, they don't have they're all the same size where the the latest offerings have like two holes are always a little bit larger but and the same with the front there I put the thumbtack on there so you can see my reflection in there actually I like the way they are I've got a lot of baby moons that I've been kind of hoarding away and I just uh, don't want to use them I have plans for them on some some different kits that are in the works here but yeah as far as this Freightliner goes another really interesting thing I'm just gonna move the camera back here now is uh, <clears throat> that paint job it's basically you know it's the light metallic green it is a lacquer paint that I went with this time and I'm gonna grab the can here and just kind of put it in the uh in the background if i can so there you'll see it's called moto master near match and on the cap there's a there's a little label there and it just says it's a it's a metallic like green but the thing about this can of paint which i find very interesting in today's world with with spray paint and I use a lot of it uh, I was always a, a very um, <clears throat> adamant Krylon um, user uh, Krylon in my opinion is, is one of the best paints that were ever were ever, was ever out there available up in here in Canada we can't get it anymore um, but this, uh, this particular can of paint is actually from about the year 1998. And I literally just used it on this truck maybe two weeks ago. And it, like I said, it's a lacquer paint. I had to use the lacquer uh, primer that, um, you know, that was compatible with this. Uh, and I got this from a store called Canadian Tire and up here it's like um, you know it's like the go-to store for uh, all kinds of different stuff including tires and auto parts I don't use it for auto parts myself but um, regardless though it's just it's it's a you know they're coast to coast and this Motomaster was their brand of uh, paint and they still have it it's called near match and uh here's here's what an updated can looks like now that gold color there i painted a, a model car kit with it and um <clears throat> you know the the can the small can the new one there the gold it's uh that, i think that can was like 18 dollars canadian to buy that can of paint the 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 bigger near match here um that can of paint was I believe it was about five ninety nine or six bucks or so back in uh, ninety eight, and the quality of that paint is just amazing, and it's been in you know it's just been hanging out for almost twenty five years now, and it's sprayed like a dream. There's still some left. I'm gonna use it for maybe a car body, uh, which there'd be enough paint to actually get a car body done. <clears throat> but um, anyways. I've been hanging on to that color and I was like yeah one day it's going to be a semi truck and uh, it's going to be that that color I've seen so many real trucks on the road that have a, a paint job similar and I just I'm totally in love with it you know it's it just looks really good and especially on that Freightliner in my opinion it looks really good now as far as paint goes here's one thing that's uh not quite right but i did it anyways is there's the 
standard Italeri Cummins. And I said, you know what? I do have some CAT engines from the Ravel Snap Tight kits, the Peterbilt and the Kenworth. They both uh, have the uh, uh, 3408 CAT engine kits in them. I'm, I'm obviously saving those for a different truck as well, or a couple different truck builds as well. But uh, I painted it cat yellow just because I thought it would look good against the green and the uh, and the kind of charcoal gray frame. And um, yeah, it's a Cummins, but I painted it cat yellow. I did the elbows in uh, orange color that I've seen quite a few times on uh, uh, some air induction systems on the, on the rigs. And um, then for kind of like a contradiction, we got the Cummins power <laughs> decals, which you've probably all seen a lot uh, from AMT offerings there. Um, we've got those decals on the frame. So, but uh, yeah, as far as the, the rest of the decals, the Newark Express, you know, I don't even know, was it a real company? I mean, you know, it was in, uh, I think, the Peterbilt 359 decal sheet. But just, you know, it was strictly based on the color of the, the placard uh, against the green. That burgundy, kind of dull burgundy color, I think, would look good on there. And then we threw in a bunch of truck and stuff here. These would be all state license kind of stickers and all the uh obligatory information you see in the decal sheets there for for running rights and whatnot um you'll notice the stack doesn't really look the best and the reason with that is that i find that and i'm not making excuses but the indentations uh on the on the italeri stacks there it's all the same stack in pretty much every kit except for the peterbilt i think uh or the peter Bilts. but um yeah i just you know i've tried to put the little flat black on there and and kind of wipe it off and let the recessed areas fill up with the black uh i've tried to leave it on there uh for a longer period of time and then take a lightly soaked thinner uh cloth or kleenex and um and wipe the excess off and uh, I tried to help out with a little bit of Sharpie this time, some silver Sharpie. But in the end, you know, I was just like, it's good enough. Um, you know, from this, say, back here, it doesn't look too bad. But regardless, um, the top of the stacks there, it's just aluminum tubing. You know, I've done this many times before. And just cut it and then burnt the inside with a lighter. And um, these would be considered stove tops, I guess. Just cut, cut right that square at the top there. What would be really nice is if I had some rain caps to go on there and um, and trim it out that way. But yeah, I do have some rain caps. Again, I've got some kits planned here. And they're going to be, uh, in my opinion, just quite spectacular. Um, and I plan on building those in the next couple of years, actually, coming up here. Um, they've been, you know, in my head, they've been uh, visions of mine for quite some time. And uh, I've got all the, the parts and pieces now to build them up. I'm not going to say what they are, but <clears throat> my wife and I recently sold the home we live in um and so on that note this will be the last model video on this table and set up with you know i've got kits in the background and stuff so it's not the most pro looking background i'm probably going to change that in a new house but we've sold this house bought a new house i'm going to stop the video and uh throw a picture in here of the new house Yeah, so um, it's quite a lot different than the, the house we're, we're living in uh, for the last four years here. It's uh, a bungalow, obviously, and that's what we want. It's got a really big garage. Um, that's my 70 Firebird. 
uh, Trans Am Recreation coming along that I've owned for 10 years. Uh, parked out front there in uh, the garage. I'm pretty stoked about that. It's uh, quite large, 30 by 24, and a uh, nice long driveway there. So one of the things, too, is, like I said, that's my 70 Firebird uh, sitting out front. I did have another channel running um, called Cap Performance Group. Now, I mentioned it in a few videos last year, and I said I was going to start doing some car stuff on there because um, I've been hot rodding basically with real muscle cars for 20 years now. But uh, I was separating the two and had a different channel. And what we're going to do now is after this video is posted, <clears throat> I'm going to post a video that I made um, about my 65 Biscayne that was on my other channel. Um, I'm getting rid of the other channel and just uh, making a different playlist for uh for this channel here my main channel and then i only have to really try and update the one but um there's also a a pretty cool clip two minute clip coming up of the 70 firebird in action um my wife and i oh cruising a few weeks ago on a nice saturday afternoon and um yeah it, it's lots of fun i'm gonna put some more real car stuff on there too um Maybe some progress stuff as the, as the Firebird continues along to its uh, restoration. You know, becoming an, an actual Trans Am or clone or recreation, whatever you want to call it. But getting back to the Freeliner here. I use those updated decals from the kit. And then they had the little... Uh, plaques there in chrome on the on the hood so you could so it looks like the actual they actually turned out quite well they're they're a little more updated uh the font and the style I, maybe the font's the same but just the style for for this truck this truck would be like uh early 80s i'm thinking mid 80s freight liner that it was modeled after and because the newark express is um i'm sure now that it's from the peterbilt 359 from amt because it's based out of california so we got some we got a california appointed plate on there and then just for whatever reasons i put a pennsylvania plate on there yeah that's what that is pennsylvania just you know something else the lights again i use that canopy glue that's been working out really good for the glass. You know, it's not 100% perfect, but it's a pretty clean install on the windows there. The wipers, you know, the paint with the silver arms and the black blades might not be correct. Just like, it's the second time I've done those running lights or clearance lights on top with the... Uh, with the black ring i don't think that's correct either and it's, it's kind of bad because like i said i've had my class one for over 30 years so you know but uh i, I should know some of these things and that's why i'm calling it out i i know i've got some mistakes in here as far as accuracy same with the mirrors one thing i did add was a couple of the extra um support arms or bars uh, just because, you know, just the two coming off the door just doesn't look right to me. And I didn't go out of my way and research it or anything uh, on an actual Freightliner. I know the, the air cleaners are correct. Um, a lot of times the fuel tank and the uh, battery box will be swapped. And they'll have the battery box underneath the sleeper and the fuel tank right up to the uh, the front of the cab there. But I like it this traditional looking way. I did add, uh, you know, the don't uh, cut or weld, the flanges there, uh, warning stickers that have been around forever. That is not an Italeri uh, fifth wheel uh, and uh, support. It's uh, from an AMT kit. Uh, most of you would know that because uh, uh, Italeri, all you get is the one style and it's that European style fifth wheel. So there we got that same California pointed plate on the back. Uh, 
a little bit of dress up on the mud flaps so it's just like you know why not um again just a lot of paint detail are orange shocks a reality maybe maybe not doesn't really matter uh, again with the aluminum tanks just that nice aluminum paint i use and then uh bare metal foil for the straps i did get a little creative with the uh, with the black wash the tamiya uh, black wash and went in uh, recessed areas around the bunk doors the cab doors um this is shadowing here it didn't leak or anything like that maybe got a little bit but regardless it kind of defined the the openings a little bit more i like the front the front looks really good to me and inside i went with an ivory wheel i wanted to be classic about it so why not put an ivory wheel on it but anyways as far as the truck goes um i'm pretty happy with the way it turned out uh, i'm gonna add some photos in and um i took a, a bunch of different photos uh, with the truck in progress and again the uh, you know it's a cummins engine probably a big cam 350 or 400 but uh it's painted cat yellow and I was just like, well, whatever. And that's the fun about modeling, right? And models. So, but in the meantime, um, I did, I did, I'm going to include a picture or two. And it has some of this going on in the background. So everybody knows that kit. I was super grateful to see that come back. I haven't seen it since I was a kid actually and I'm 54 so it's been a while um hey we've got two of them going on yeah well we got a plan there and you know we got a mixer body and a dump body going on so there's something coming here with these Kenworths I'm pretty happy about those will be the next kits out uh, on a video here and it's going to be like a a, a company schemed um you know they got gravel trucks and they got concrete trucks or cement trucks but yeah and as far as the rest of it goes well we got a lot of plans going on here and i appreciate everybody hanging in there there's all the paint i use I'm not gonna comment about rust-oleum or even the duplicolor. I don't know if you get duplicolor down in the U.S. I'm pretty sure you do. Um, all I can say is that paint ain't what it used to be. And that can of Moto Master paint there, that green, is like just simply amazing how how great that paint is. We've got a bunch of packing to do here. Most of that factory steel sealed stuff there is for sale. Um, either on eBay or on a local uh, selling site called Kijiji. And then a bunch more stuff there that's planning on building. There We haven't forgotten about this guy. The big 116 scale Kenworth. Um, doing it up in a kind of like a Canadian winch style tractor. Uh, that I used to uh, model after the real one I used to drive for a company called Frackmaster. Uh, Canadian frack master <clears throat> and then of course the car thing just never goes away I'm a big Pontiac fan you're gonna see that was with, with my real car stuff um, and in that playlist I think I'm just gonna call it a and K speed shop or a and K performance maybe just you know just naming the playlist but um, <clears throat> after my wife's name's first initial is a and then uh, and then my initial case so but that gto it's a classic 69 judge um <laughs> actually when i post the video of the biscayne it's mostly a driving video or onboard camera with my gopro so there's um there's no footage of it but at a car show about 10 years ago my wife and i got challenged by a 70 judge and i looked over at her and she gave me the okay to street race this guy 
which I know you shouldn't really be doing, but let's just say the timing, the location was just perfect. So, but we put them away by the time we did the two, three shift and it was just simply an amazing experience. There is a 69 charger. That's, um, this is a testers, uh, testers mint. They used to call it or Lincoln mint kind of thing. Uh, pretty detailed kits. Uh, made out of metal and I'm stripping that one down. It's going to be a Dirty Mary Crazy Larry um, Recreation clone whatever model and then of course this uh, the judge here. It's not quite done yet I don't know if I'll do a feature on him or not, but I might just conglomerate a bunch of my cars together and do um, Do a feature but uh, Yeah this is another testers Lincoln mint, mint kit as well. So, but um, yeah, getting back to the Freightliner. It was a really fun build. Uh, I'll just tell you right now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the, uh, the Ertl re-release there, round two, the, the Great Dane trombone. Uh, and I, I'm just gonna build it as a 40 foot uh, tandem trailer, believe it or not, I'm not going to modify it, uh, and, but I'm just going to stretch it out, and then this guy's going to have that for something to pull behind him, which I think should look pretty good. I'm probably going to put Alcoa wheels on the trailer, um, and yeah, that'll be about the extent of it though, but yeah, the Kenworths are coming with the uh, mixer in the dump box. And then a um, bunch of car stuff, a bunch of real car stuff. And then uh, after that, to be honest with you, we're going to do this Kenworth tractor right here. The conventional as a day cab. I've got uh, real um, nice drive tires for it. i got a bunch of aftermarket stuff for it. <clears throat> and it's going to be... Pulling a Super B. I'm going to take that flat deck kit. I got a couple more over there. And I'm going to make myself a Super B with chrome alcoas and dress out this, this day cab really nice. And that's going to be after, after the mixer. So we're going to have a little Kenworth run here. And then we're going to get back after, we're going to get back on it with a cab over. Not sure if it's going to be that Kenworth there or this Mac. But uh, that stuff's coming. Anyways, thanks for hanging in there. As always, I appreciate the, the patience and all the comments. I read every one of them and I try to answer to all of them. Sometimes I don't get the updates and the answers are a little bit late. But just thank you for all the viewership and uh, keep on building those models.